part of today's video is sponsored by Best Buy. So it's almost been one year since I've reviewed the Asus G14. And when I reviewed it in 2022, I reviewed the more expensive model with the RX 6800S. Overall, I said it was a great laptop. It had good battery life, good performance, but it wasn't perfect. Like it had some heating issues. There were lots of software issues and I didn't get a chance to compare it to the 6700S, which a lot of you guys asked me to do. The good news is I finally have the 6700S on the table. And I wanna revisit this laptop because I still feel like today, going into 2023 and probably for the first half of 2023, this is still gonna be the best 14 inch gaming notebook you can buy right now. Because the price point of the upcoming 2023 version is probably gonna be around $1,700, which will probably net you an RTX 40 series GPU and a regular QHD display. And forget about the mini LED display. You want that thing, that's gonna cost well over $2,000. And with times being a lot tougher for people, if you can save three to $400 on a laptop and still get good performance, then you're gonna be happy. Now granted, the software experience hasn't been perfect throughout the entire year, but a lot of it has been fixed. For example, the power delivery port wasn't that great. You know, sometimes I would charge using a USB Type-C adapter, 100 watt Type-C adapter, and it wouldn't get consistent charging rates. Sometimes it'd be in the 30s or the 40s. Sometimes I'd plug it in and I'd wake up and open up the laptop and the laptop would be dead. But the good news is that's been fixed. With one of the more recent BIOS updates late last year, they fixed that issue. The one thing that I've really enjoyed about this product is the portability. You know, like it's not as fancy and premium as the Razer Blade 14, but it's premium enough. Premium enough that you can justify it for the price tag that they're asking. And I love the fact that when I throw it in my bag, it's not too heavy. I can travel anywhere with it. And then when I come back to the studio, I can hook it up to a, a desktop environment, connect a bunch of monitors and have a more desktop-like experience. But the one thing that Asus promised us was USB 4, at least to us reviewers. That's what we were told, that this laptop would get USB 4.0. We saw AMD release drivers, but it was up to ASUS to implement it. And we never saw anything throughout the entire year. The good news though, is that ASUS is working on it. In fact, if you're brave enough, you can download a beta BIOS that enables it. I personally did it because I wanted to see how it would perform. It took a while to install. The computer crashed a couple of times, but once it was installed, everything's been working flawlessly. In fact, I have it connected to an RX 7900 XT inside of a Razer Chroma eGPU chassis. Now the port situation has been good. I feel like it has the right amount of IO that I never felt like I had to carry a dongle with me. The only thing as a creator that I wish was different was that we had a full size SD card slot instead of a micro SD. That would be my only nitpick about the port lineup but the keyboard has been fantastic. And even though that this is a newer model, the keyboard color, if you get the white model, is still a different version of white compared to the deck. Like if you take a very close look at the keys, it still has that green tinge to it. So my suggestion is if you don't wanna see that, buy the black version of this laptop instead, but it's been good. You know, the typing experience has been fantastic. These keys still feel very good to type on. RGB has been great. I personally don't change it. I don't really care about it, but you can still change the keys if you really want to. You have great speakers with two on top and two on the bottom. The sound quality has been good. Now this version has the QHD display and it's been a beautiful display to look at. Text looks crisp. The screen gets bright enough and the colors are very accurate, especially when you take the time to calibrate it yourself. From a design standpoint, I felt very confident editing videos or photos on this device. The webcam is good enough that if I have to hop on to a zoom call, I can totally do that. And it has facial recognition, which allows me to easily log in without having to type in any passwords. Now here's the best part. Performance on the 6700S is not that much different than the more expensive 6800S. And look, you're getting the same CPU. They're both using AMD's Ryzen 9 6900HS. These CPUs are identical in both models. The only thing that's slightly different is the RAM size. I have 16 in here compared to 32. And you're getting the 6700S GPU compared to the 6800S. Now it really depends what you're doing. If it's CPU related, like you're a developer and you're compiling code, you're not gonna see a difference between both of these laptops. If you're a gamer, you'll get slightly more frames per second using the more expensive 6800S model. And to tell you the truth, the difference is not even that significant. Like I'd only see anywhere from a four to eight frame per second difference between both of these laptops. I don't think the price point of moving up to the more expensive one is really that granted. 
And because I think the original unit I had had a bit of a QC issue, if I started running applications like Premiere Pro, for example, which had to use the GPU and the CPU at the same time, this 6700S actually outperformed it. And you can see the same thing holding true when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. And even the thermals were very interesting because with the 6700S, it would thermally perform better. And you would think they would be the same because they're using a similar size charging brick and they're using very similar power profiles. But because that 6700S doesn't need to push as many compute units, doesn't need to hit a higher clock speed or whatever it is compared to the 6800S, I find that was just enough to keep temperatures in check with this guy compared to the 6800S. But it also might be a QC issue, you know? Like, I've had the 6800S get so hot, the laptop completely shuts off. I've had it to the point where applications crash, whereas on this guy, that never happened once. And this is important because I've read a lot of your comments on the Reddit forum saying that you're playing the QC lottery when you buy an Asus G14. And I think at first you were, you know? Like, I think if you were to buy the more powerful version of it, you were, you were increasing the chances of some of these things going wrong. But this 6700S model and the fact that I bought it like a few weeks ago is a big difference. You know, like I'm finding it to be a more consistent experience. Fan noise is very equal across the board. I'm not seeing a difference there. Like when you want this thing to be quiet, you can totally do that. But if you want to put turbo on, put it on its higher performance setting, then yeah, it's going to hit over 50 decibels. Now the internals are identical, so I'm not going to go over that again. You can watch my original review, but I wanted to see what the battery life would be like today compared to the first time I reviewed the laptop. And with all the ASUS BIOS updates, I'm happy to report it's actually better. They've increased the battery life with the 6800S, but battery life is still better with the 6700S. We're talking about over 11 hours of use compared to 10 on the more expensive model. Now granted, if you don't need an ASUS G14, Best Buy is also selling an HP Envy X360-15. This is also using an AMD CPU, so you're gonna get really, really good battery life. This guy over here has tons of ports to utilize. You have a 360 convertible display, so you can put it in any different position. Keyboard is absolutely fantastic. Sound quality is good. In fact, I actually reviewed this laptop, so if you're interested in finding out all the details about this guy, I'll place a link in the description down below. Honestly, I am happy that I got to review the 6700S model, and I truly wish this was the original one that I reviewed for you guys, but it gave me perspective for the price, for performance, for all of that, this is the G14 to get. Don't even look at the 6800S model. This is the one to get. It's such a good deal right now, and especially considering that the new G14 is probably gonna be priced higher than this, it just makes it that more attractive. Especially if you're someone out there who's been saving up for a long time. With the fact that it's finally getting proper USB 4.0 support, means when you're at home, you can pay a little bit extra in the future to extend the life of this laptop by using an external GPU. But then when you hit the road, you still have a powerful 14 inch notebook that has a dedicated GPU. And because it's using an AMD processor, you get all the benefits of power efficiency and better battery life. Now, if you're interested in picking up this product or the HP Envy X360 15, I'll place links in the description down below. And if you have any comments, let me know as well. I wanna hear your experience with the G14 so far. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.